Welcome to the Triangle Microworks IEC 608-70-5 Communication Protocol Training Videos. This is the fourth video in the series. In the first three videos, we provided an overview of IEC 608-70-5. We looked at the application layer and ASDUs and dug into functionality like polling and controls. In this video, we'll dig into the link layer, the transport layer, and the physical layer. Next section gets into some of the more serious details, which can be important, but they may not be important in your application because if you're using the Triangle Microworks source code library, it will handle most of that for you. Now let's take a look at the IEC 608-70-5-101 link layer. As I pointed out before, the 101 link layer is different from 104. In some ways, you might say 101 has a link layer, uh, whereas 104, the link layer is replaced by the TCP IP stack. So the 101 link layer has a checksum or CRC to make sure that the data is received correctly. It also has the capability to initialize or reset the link. And it has link confirmations to confirm that the primary and secondary stations are up and running. By the way, that primary and secondary refers to both master and outstation, depending on who initializes the message. And that leads us to a discussion of balanced versus unbalanced mode. In the balance mode, which is equivalent to DNP, there's a request from the primary and acknowledgement from the secondary. This could happen in either direction. With unbalanced, the controlling station, or the master, always has to initiate the command sequence. This is because it's sharing, for example, on a multi-drop line, the physical layer with lots of controlled stations. DNP has no equivalent of unbalanced mode. Note that this drawing is showing the link layer. So these are link layer frames and link layer acts. Also note that the confirmations are optional. You can configure the link not to use confirmed data, which you might want to do, for example, if the link was known to be very reliable. If you use confirmed data, it will retry at the link layer. So if you don't use confirmed, then you just trust that it gets there and you find out when everything comes through at the application layer whether or not you got all of the data. There is link layer addressing similar to DNP, except there's a few differences with unbalanced versus balanced. There's a broadcast address for unbalanced, and it's important to point out that the balance mode only supports point-to-point -point links, and that it has a destination address for the primary and a source address for the secondary. You can configure how many octets to use in the addressing versus DNP3, which always uses two octets. Now let's take a look at the link layer frame. The specs have different formats, so this is the FT1.2 frame, which is used for 101. It's built up with all of the fields that you see here. To start, it identifies what type of frame it is. The frames can be either fixed length, variable length, or single character. And in the next field is the length, so this tells you how many total octets are in the frame. This is really only needed for the variable length frame. And then there's function codes for the link layer services. And then there's the session address, which is the address of the device or the session of the target. Next comes the user data, which is the ASDU and is put inside this LPDU. And finally, the checksum and an end octet, which is different for the different frame types. So the control field has several different bits. The first up is the direction bit and a frame count bit. The frame count bit is a very simple sequence number. It just toggles, so it would tell you if you missed a frame. This is a very simple mechanism, and there's no real sequencing. Just kind of, if you will, a one-bit sequence number. The secondary station can also warn that it's about to have a buffer overflow using the DFC bit. And then the ACD bit, which basically informs the controlling station that there's class 1 data available. So if the primary has requested class 2 data, the secondary can say, wait, I have class 1 data, which is higher priority. And that's only used for unbalanced mode. And then the PRM bit tells you if this is the primary or initiating, or the secondary or responding. And then there are the function codes, which are also included. They basically tell you what type of request or response is being sent. And these are different for balanced versus unbalanced modes. They have different requests and different responses. So that's about it for the 101 link layer. So as we've said before, in 104 you remove the link layer and replace it with the standard TCP stack. 104 adds a header to the 101 ASDU, and this is meant to replace the functionality that you had with the 101 link layer. When you add the header, it becomes an Application Protocol Data Unit, or APDU. And that's what this is. It's the APCI header plus the ASDU, and that equals the APDU. And so the ACPI has this control field. It has all the sequencing and control of starting and stopping transmission. It also has an indication of the three different types. These are sort of like the function codes in 101. They tell you whether they're information frames, supervisory frames, or test frames. 
which is the equivalent of the one one link layer, but they're not called function codes. And they're not exactly the same. But in some degree, you could say they kind of replicate that functionality or they're kind of the equivalent functionality of the function codes in 101. So this essentially allows you to transmit more. Uh, it becomes kind of a data window of things that you can transmit. TCP itself is very reliable and will detect lost or duplicated frames. So you don't have to have that functionality. Um, so instead, this kind of allows you a, a transmit window. It's true, we look for missing sequence numbers, uh, but TCP should have told you that anyway. So as we keep saying, 104 maps to the TCP services. The controlling station is the TCP client, and the controlled station is the TCP server. It uses point-to-point -point mode only, and it defines the standard port as being port 2404. Many installations will allow you to configure a different port, but the default specified in the standard is 2404, just as it's 20,000 for DNP. A large part of the 104 standard talks about this mapping. There's some other differences with the ASDUs and the timestamps and things like that, but this is a big portion. If you read the 101 spec, it doesn't really repeat what's in the 101 spec, it just says what's added. So it adds some type ID, some ASDUs, and it also talks about this mapping to TCP. It also talks about redundancy, and I think those are the main things that are added. But in order to look at 104, you often have to refer back to the 101 spec, because a lot of it is really only in the 101 spec. So to understand 104, you really have to look at both the 101 and 104 specs. So let's take a look again at the physical layer. 104 uses TCP IP protocol suite and is supported over Ethernet. The 101 spec points out a variety of serial standards that can be supported. So that pretty much wraps up all of the layers. In the next video, we'll look at security in IEC 60870-5, and then we'll wrap it all up with a conclusion.